going to call Luke Darcy and Kelly Underwood. Good luck, Kel. Thanks for that, Andy. Certainly very much looking forward to this one as they've broken from their huddles. Hawthorne will kick to the left of screen. Luke Darcy, just having a look out there, we see Matthew Scarlett's going to line up on Roughhead playing his 100th game this afternoon. Buddy's on a wing. Ablett's down forward. Yeah, what a uh, build up to this game, Kel. It's got finals atmosphere written all over it. Another surprising move. Gary Ablett starting forward and Sam Mitchell lining up at centre half back at the moment. Can you believe that? Well, they've got history and the stage is set. The Hawks season on the line. They're playing for their footy life in 2009 and we're underway. McGlynn in the middle tries to get a handball out, barging his way through with Stokes. Franklin's in there just making his presence felt. And then over to Saul and Guerra looking to mark his Osborne. Good pressure, though, from behind Wojcicki. Here comes Buddy. Over to Osborne on his trusty left. He's going to go one out. And it's Roughhead and Scarlett floating through, taking the defensive mark is Enright. The core is, and they've made a bit of a mess of this. Scarlett's there to help them out, but it's not over yet. Ball is the chorus. Lonigan had it for a long time, and he's gone. And this has got a little bit of the feeling. Sirioli, I think, will run around and snap this on his left. Well suited to kick this goal, but St Kilda started in a similar fashion with tackles inside 50. Per it, perfect for him, but he didn't nail it. Started brilliantly last week, Cyril Rioli, but the signs were there as they were last week that this is a tuned in Hawthorne that's going to make life difficult for its opponent. Strong stuff from Luke Hodge. Enright brings it back in on kicking duties to Selwood, out to Mumford. The big man marks out in front, gives it over to Selwood, sold him into a little bit of trouble, but he's able to get around a couple of hawks. Goes inside, he's got Varco in his 50th game. He'll be looking for a big one. They share it around in the middle of the ground and back to Varco, he's brought down though. Big tackle and he's brought down by Brown. And the Hawks can go again. Let's have a look, replay this tackle. Campbell Brown on song early. The Hawks looking to send it inside 50. Hawks on song early. Sewell. Mungrel kick into the 50. That was brave from Bartell with Roughhead coming the other way. Scarlett to Mackey. Hawthorne throwing a lot at Geelong in the opening moments. Harry Taylor for Rook. Three of them will come at him. We'll see the first one of them off and do it coolly. Chapman, rare error. Oh, uh, Ablett it was and he copped it. Harry Taylor with uh, Ablett picking himself up slowly. He's okay and he's back into the fray like the champion he is. And he measures it off for Stokes from behind. Mooney arriving. Chapman there this time. Mooney barging in with a vengeance. <laughs> he did not like that. Big Cam Mooney, as we watch the Ablett bump here, just Ooh. just glancing blow. But Mooney, the one after, here it is again. Shades of the grand final when Mitchell came through and collected him. In the meantime, ball squirts inside 50, right on the last line of defence. And doing really well, there was the fullback in Gillum. He handballs over the top to Selwyn. And now show and makers. Oh, he went to go on. He's in trouble. He's brought down. And Rook at the fall of the ball. His advantage played. Rook just dribbles it through and bounces it through. And the Cats break through first. Turnover. And Sewell gets off to Shamex. I don't mind this. This is taking them on. You don't win unless you do that. He's made a mistake there. Hope he doesn't stop doing that. But a nice finish by Rook in the end. Geelong absorbing the pressure of the opening few minutes. And that's what they want to be able to do this year. Mumford to Mackey. Harry Taylor, wrong-sided, used the left, as left footers like to do. Ablett, fully recovered by the look of it. He has uh, the champion's ability to make up his mind as he goes, make it up as he goes. So a ball up inside Geelong's 50. Had to hesitate there on that pass, uh, Ablett, because the Ruckman Taylor dropped back into the hole, so he held onto the footy a little bit longer, but Hawthorne are really setting up their zone early. Taylor out positioning Mumford. Sewell over it, needs to get it out, and Ablett busy again. Osborne. Guerra. Hawthorne being forced deep into enemy territory. Lewis took a long time, eventually got himself out of it. 
Showing makers, and again, he's not quite able to uh, finish the job. Rook dangerous once more. No. Call stopped. it back. Simultaneous with my decision in the handball. That's Good decision, umpire. The 50 chance, the 50. So Rook's ball having to kick from 53 or 4. Having kicked the first of the match. Thanks, God. Low trajectory, not quite the line. So it's a miss, Geelong lead by a goal. Here's the high contact to Max Rooks, a little glancing blow. Gillam brings it back into play. Short to Birchall. It's a no-frills footballer. Birchall, the Tasmanian. He goes long, one-on-one, -on -one, caught behind was Brown. Taylor couldn't take the mark. He'll win the free. Plays on quickly. Over to Corey. Here go the Cats again. Oh, it's an awkward little kick off the foot. And Mackey's there. He's caught. Ball into spirit. Hodge trying to barge his way through. And he is absolutely gang-tackled by a pack of Cats. Pate holding the ball too. So the umpire... Setting a bit of a standard for the game there. Didn't think he had a heap of prior opportunity. We'll have another look at it now. Strong tackle by Mackey. He did, in fairness, he tried to burst his way through, so good decision. Big tackle by Mackey, and he's rewarded. Short and wide. It's a sideways kick to Scarlett. And then he just pokes it forward to Lonigan. Hawks have got a heap of numbers back behind the footy here. Zoning up, so he's got to hesitate here, Lonigan. Probably go sideways. And there's no leads forthcoming, so in fact goes backwards to Enright. Right on the edge of the centre circle. Spots a loose man at centre half forward. That's Mackey. Now they'll go inside 50. And the lead is on by Big Hawkins. The Tomahawk strong hands out in front. Just the start that he needs. Yes. A fair income jump at the footy. Great kick from Mackey. Now, the next part of the equation is the confidence of this young fella is to kick the goal. This has been his problem. We know he can do that and he's getting better at it. Nice and relaxed, relaxed arm, and with a bit of momentum, kick through the footy. Get quicker, son. He's kicked 20 goals this season. He turns 21 on Monday for an early birthday present. It's not to be. Well, it's an issue for him, isn't it, Blighty? It just it looks nervous with the foot in his hands. He doesn't look as though he's comfortable shooting for goal. Luke, I think if, at some stage or other during the day, I hope he does another shot. I think he holds the ball too far in the middle of his body rather than over his, slightly over his right leg. And he's always pulling the ball back for adjustment. Oh, danger here for the Hawks. They're under pressure down the back. Lewis, Birchall, Mitchell. Deliberated, delivered. Harry Taylor arriving, but uh, coming the other way, Renoff did well to Campbell Brown. Numbers with Geelong here. So is the bounce. Corey. Corey Enright. Burns, Geelong building again and looking very good, playing with purpose and real quality early. Mackey. Stabbing ball for Mooney. Now, he can have a set shot from about 50 metres, the range he tends to prefer. Geelong are number one in the competition at generating set shots for goal, but they're number 14 in the competition at converting set shots. From outside 50. Good looking kick off the boot. Oh, that's a good start. The Moondogs fired. It's pretty rapid, isn't he? And so he should be. It's a great kick. But it's more about the technique. You must get momentum kicking through the footy. No matter how close you are to goals. So it's Mumford and Renoff to square off in the middle. And Mumford brings it down. The Hawks desperately need a goal. They can't afford the Cats to get the first three. They need to conjure up a goal from somewhere. See Sam Mitchell at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. There he is. He started this whole first quarter at half-back, picking Shannon Burns up, really playing as a genuine defender. Third man up was Bartell. Only as far down, though, was Franklin. And now... Gives it off. Back to Mitchell. Squirts out the back of the pack. Beautiful yeah, kick. Beautiful kick. Great vision to Rioli. He sends it inside 50. And out taking the mark Ooh. was Dowler. 50. He's going to pay it, is he, or not? He thought Just about it. He was dealt with harshly. Scarlett got straight into Dowler after he took the mark. 
Has the kicking here. How's that for a kick? And Riolis was equally as good on a step and a half. Unbelievable skill. He's a touch lucky there, Matty Scarlett, on what we've seen paid this year. Odala playing just his 10th AFL game. He really needs to stand up here, but he hangs it out to the right. And another behind for the Hawks. Well, it's been an interesting start. Hawthorne coming yeah. out with a bit between their teeth, but uh, Geelong responding in the most impressive way. And now Hawthorne, the team, just needing to settle. Milburn dabbing it short. Not a great choice as he went for Vachinsky, and Shields is able to put it into a 50-50 at the 50. They've pushed a lot of players back, Hawthorne, so far. I mean, you've got to score. This is their chance. They really need to get going on the scoreboard. Hawkins rucking. Taylor getting him under the ball with ease. And now they'll do it from a ball up. And just to the right of that pack there, there are three extra Hawthorne players, about 40 to 50 metres off that ball, which means Geelong have got them outnumbered around this contest. Hawkins coming from the same side as Taylor, as you can see. And again, Taylor with a bit too much nous and height. Sewell brought down. So another ball up and another contest of the big men. What should Hawkins uh, be doing against the bigger man, Luke? Well, I think he's just got to use his strength. He's a big frame. He doesn't want to get caught uh, trying to uh, out-wrestle him, but he just has, that's a good option. Just decided to lay back and have a jump at it. Good second effort, too. He did well, and Burns gets the kick away from the contest. Chapman forced to go the spoil with Gillam. Well played, Selwood. To Stokes, good stuff from Geelong, and here's Mooney again. And the bounce is not bad. Just forgot to take the ball with him, and Mitchell arrived. Unforgivingly, but his kick this time is not so hot. Saul scouting. Hawthorne under pressure. Saul in for another go. Shields brought down Bartell into his back. It's Hawthorne's ball. Tackling's been really good, hasn't it? I mean, there's a high one there, but, gee, they've been at each other. Shields, the youngster, shares it around. Mitchell, oh, look out, Lewis, nearly caught from behind. He must have been invisible, Kelly. How did he miss him? <laughs> he charged at him, didn't he? And then he missed everything oh. as they send it up the ground. And now back to Lewis on the left. Oh, disappointing kick. Straight down the throat of Taylor. Ling. Lonigan, play on call. Ling again. Darren Milburn had 11 opponents last time they played the Hawks. And between them, they kicked a couple of goals against him. Joel Corey just not able to keep it in, not happy with himself. Whoa, another goal to Geelong. And, and it's going to be tight, isn't it? There's no doubt Clarkson's playing defensively. He doesn't want this scoreboard to get away from him. But if Geelong sneak another goal here, the Hawks are going to have to change because they're going to have to kick goals. Renoff palms it down beautifully to Saul. They're still trying to work their way through. Shields over to McGlynn. He needs to get rid of it quickly. And he does. Running onto it. Lewis. Dowler. Now Mitchell. He just pops it up. And his man will need to be two. Fair and he's kick. absolutely crunched Chance Bateman. Kept his eye on the ball. Did everything right. Couldn't take the mark. And wins the free. It's actually a pretty well-weighted kick from Mitchell because there was a lot of numbers getting back to try and defend Franklin, so he chose the right option, and Matty Scarlett also came through and yeah, caught him with an elbow to the head. So, correct decision again. Well, just mention that. They need this, don't they? I mean, they really just need to get on the board, settle things down. They certainly need a settler. Just under 10 minutes remaining in this first term. Bateman on the approach. He kicked the first goal in the grand final for the Hawks. He doesn't kick it today, though. So another disappointing result, squandering early opportunities, Hawthorne. It should have been kicked. Great setup from Mitchell. Enright bombs long. Hawkins, what a good mark. Good signs here. See, what a week can football can make. Just getting some kicks last week in Ruck just freed him up. They're the best three marks you've seen him take for a while. Such a good move, Blighty, I think. Yeah. Giving him another string to his bow. But talk about... Uh, it's quite fascinating. You talk about game plans. But the, if you haven't got a game plan C and D, you sometimes get beaten in grand finals, you know. Taylor wide for Vachinsky. Thank you, Jared Holt. So the Cats by 11 points. But um, 
And very little in it early. Hawthorne taking its turn to do some attacking, but not finding the way home. In right. Now Tenace getting his opportunity in this uh, team hit by some injuries. That's a really good example of how Geelong try and break down this cluster, Tim. Tenace just had no real right to play on there. He was manned up in the mark, but they take a risk. Hawthorne are really zoning up big time, as Blighty's alluded to a few times. So they're making it hard for Geelong to play on. But as you can see, they haven't been able to kick a goal themselves. A win to Hawkins in the ruck, but no takeaway. And uh, it looks as though there'll be a ball up. Yeah, Ling and uh, Hodge just uh, doing battle there. That's an interesting matchup in the grand final. Ling went and tagged Sam Mitchell. But Hodge is the informed player in the competition in the last two weeks, just about. So he's got Ling this afternoon. Hawkins, Kennedy's in there, fighting hard on the bottom of the pack with Selwood, wins a free kick. We say that often, on the bottom of the pack, Selwood, and then he just squares it up to Rook, who runs over 50 and unloads three in a row for the Cats. The wild man from Borneo, Max Rook, has kicked two out of three. I didn't know he was from Borneo. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to yeah, say that. Yeah, no, it's in his profile what, in the what AFL you guy. You haven't done your homework. <laughs> oh, that word again. He's become... Uh... <laughs> it's been an issue for you, bloke. Tom, uh, Tom Hawkins uh, into the centre square bounce. He's been good to us. Hawkins early. He's yeah. got his hand on the ball. And as I said before, there's uh, the marks for the match so far. Man. 26 to Geelong, 6 to Hawthorne. But... It's a good move. I like Hawkins in the ruck. And sharing the honours with Taylor there. Oh, I got him in the face. Just to finish that off, Tim, it's um, Casterton. He's uh, Max is from just yeah. around the corner Not from, far from Borneo. Borneo. <laughs> Osborne blazing, miscuing, hoping and very nearly getting a result. Renoff got it onto his chest. Should have finished the job. Oh, you don't get a freebie like that, do you? You just don't. So we watch this centre square stuff. So the Hawks still searching for their first. And starting to need it badly. Cats swarming that uh, contest. Still low a chance for the Hawks, but Osborne wasn't clean with his hands. So there'll be another ball up. Gee, the Geelong jumpers look to outnumber the, yeah. the brown and gold ones there. They've got numbers back. Yeah, they have, Tim. There's four extra Hawthorne players back, so Cats theory should win it. Right in front of the Hawthorne goal, Renoff doing it all, but Taylor comes through. Lonigan back to Milburn, and then he can release a player wide, and that's Taylor again. Kicked a goal in the opening quarter last week against Melbourne Taylor, floating back from defence. He spots another loose man, and that's Lonigan. If they play it smart here, the Cats, and they've got good skills, Hawthorne, if they're going to be outnumbered like four to eight in their forward line, the forwards just won't get a kick. It'll be a fluke. Monaghan long and up the line. Hands and the in the freeze back. against Taylor. Yep, just got uh, a couple of hands into the back. So Mumford, short, brings it back in board to Selwood and then over the top to Ling. Had to get around Franklin and did well. But the kick wasn't good. And it was straight to Roughhead. The Hawks are away. And Rioli running out of defence where he was back covering Bartell. Gives to Mitchell. Franklin. Not really in the game so far. Needs to be a factor for the Hawks' sake. Show and makers moan down, but got it high. Free kick. Just a couple of times, some of the inexperienced Hawks just not quite understanding how hard and quick the pace of this game is. Show and makers just had to realise he was going to get tackled. Luckily, he got the free kick. Well, it says something for the contrast between last week against Collingwood and, uh, and facing the yardstick Geelong. McGlynn now to sit it forward for the Hawks. Dowler edging Lonigan out, but Lonigan laid a good tackle. Milburn, the ever steady Corey. Kick. And incisively yes, slots it to Chapman at halfback. They're well on top, the Geelong defence in this opening quarter. Chapman out towards the interchange oh. gates. Rook might have been shoved, he was, and he'll win a free. Well done. How smart's Mackey? He could see that Hawthorne had three backs, so instead of running on with it, just held it up and gave it back to Rook. Really smart play. Had plenty of the ball already this on. quarter. Play the bearded on. bulldozer play kicked on. a couple. Short to Selwood. He's seen a lot of it as well. So 
Just slowing it down, straight into the man of the mark, who was Roughhead, and it ricochets back to McGlynn, who might have been taken high. Fighting in there hard is Lewis. The ball won't squirt out of there. You can see why Hawthorne caused Geelong some trouble, because they force them into errors. They make them hesitate a little bit on the kick going yes, forward, and they have yes, to it. kick like yeah. this to really get through. And yeah. when they do, they can, but time to time they turn it over as well. Mumford and Taylor. Taylor on the prowl. Kennedy to Mitchell. Just handballed over to Rioli. He's electrifying. He goes straight boot to ball. And then he kicks long. Underneath it and forced to work hard was Renoff. Dowler comes in and offers assistance. But there are Geelong jumpers everywhere. And Scarlett with a cool head spots Stokes out wide. In fact, it's Burns. And the Cats can run. Yes, they have the southern wing. Burns just waiting for the right target. It didn't come. So he took a risk on Guerra, who pursued hard. But Varco's there to receive. Now Ablett. Hanging it in the air for Hawkins to crash in. Murphy at the fall. Gillam, pressure on the Hawthorne defence again. Guerra, Murphy. And they get out of it pretty well this time. Now Bateman, as they can rebound. But there's not a lot to kick to. And he too has to delay. And then misses his target, uh, Renoff. Roughhead arriving on his wrong side. Can he run it home? Oh, he's done it brilliantly in his 100th game. That's a good start. So it took nearly 23 minutes of the opening quarter for the Hawks to get their first on the board. A dream start for Jared Roughhead in his 100th game. Hard to believe it's the same side that kicked seven goals to none in the third term against Collingwood last week. Bartell. Tangle of arm and legs. One of the things, though, Kelly, that's a freak goal, isn't it? I mean, you've got to get some cheap ones in a game like this, otherwise you get tired. And Geelong have got the cheap ones so far. They certainly have as we're back underway. So, a uh, saw rather, tackled by Burns. Tackle pinned it. Sorry, David. We'll go again. That's a pretty damning stat so far in the match. Geelong kicking at 74%. Hawthorne's kicking efficiency down 48%. Bartell was the third man up there. But the Hawks win this clearance. Mitchell, Murphy, they're going the wrong way, though. Birchall, Guerra. To show and makers. Oh, he's already been caught a few times. He's caught again. Guerra, they get out of trouble. Ellis, back to Guerra. And now Mitchell, centre of the ground. Birchall, oh, I don't like the look of this. He's brought down and they've got a real appetite for the contest, the Cats. Hawks winning the clearance is seven to five so far. They've had a lot of stoppages. Not a free-flowing game as yet. Bartell puts it in motion. Murphy with Hawkins arriving, but Gillam there to lay a shepherd. Ellis to receive. Running for him onto the wing is Kennedy. Merging young player for Hawthorne. And has to follow oh, up his own kick. Now, can he get out of there? Osborne, Brown. <laughs> under siege, so a ball up. Good tackling. Josh Kennedy starting to make his mark, of course. There's Luke Hodge coming back on, Tim. He's just had the one disposal. Cameron Lee has done a number on him in the first quarter. Bartell, third man in there, and then receives from Ablett. Tenace, Corey. Oh, Good out. move this by Geelong. The speedy Vachinsky takes him on. Does it well. Ran into the wall. Corey from a long way. Throw in. Luke, you notice something interesting in the warm-up. We've seen Bartell go third man up about three times now. He was practising his centre square bounce jumping before the game, Jimmy Bartell. And I think with Mumford, the only recognised Ruckman, he'll go third man up a lot more today. Four hit-outs for Jimmy Bartell, unusual. As the Hawks, through their captain Mitchell, try to clear it out of the danger zone. McGlynn tries to get there, but the boundary line will beat him. We'll have a throw in. Big couple of minutes here, psychological couple of minutes more than the actual game style, but Cats get a late one, just puts them on the back foot again. Taylor and Mumford, both Ruckman, fresh airy, back to Mitchell. Now Lewis. Needs to be precise, Ooh, just hung there for an anxious moment. Murphy the mark, 
Now that switch play. Renoff off to the run of Birchall. He's on the right side for a left boot to Brown. At half forward, he just stabs it in front of Buddy. Franklin on the lead. He's and he not likes without. this location. Yeah, he does, Kel. We've seen him unload from here, and he's not dissimilar to Mooney in this position, Malcolm. He just winds up, he kicks through the footy, and he's very capable from here. Yeah, it's a big arc, isn't it? Odds out here, 32%. About that. So here he goes. He's got his strut back. About 80%. He's got the buzz back. He's got the accuracy back. That is unbelievable. But he loves the big stage. Now, and they all know it. You'd think that would be an uncomfortable spot for him with the arc that he takes on approach. But from that position, he's kicked four goals, one this year from out near 50 on the left flank. As a set shot. As a set shot. The Hawks are right in the game. And they might be even further in it. They might be in front as Osborne receives from Brown. And he drills it. And the Hawks lead. Uh, brilliant play, Campbell Brown. How good was that? Right, they won it out of the centre clearance. Taylor got his hand on it. And look at Campbell Brown. He just, uh, Mackey went to grab it. Look at the block he laid straight afterwards. Just got rid of Mackey. And that allowed Osborne enough space. But he was good enough on his left foot. As a forward, Luke, I'd rather see him play in front and go at the ball first. If you keep running second like that, it's not going to fool you away all the time. I reckon that is a lucky Hawk goal. Great work he did after, you're quite right. The blocking was sensational. But that was luck. A lucky Hawk goal. And Bomber Thompson will be bitterly disappointed to go in at quarter time. Down. After kicking the opening couple. Taylor and Mumford. Mumford to Ling. High ball inside 50. Out in front, Hawkins. Strong mark. He put the big mitts out and the Sharon stuck like glue. It certainly did stick, Ollie. <laughs> now, let's have a look at his kicking style. If we can just see the... I, I just reckon Luke, he gets it, as I said before, just a bit too much in the middle of his body. He's got to get it more over his right leg. See if we can pick it up. Well, the distance won't test him. Perhaps see the that, accuracy will. See, that's in the middle of his... Yeah, he just, he just needs to move it over a fraction. Directly in Thank front. You. Has he been listening to Blighty's comments? He puts it straight through the middle. The cat strike back. He's more in the middle of the body and throws it out late. I just reckon that he quite often miss hits him. I mean, it's a goal. We're happy with that. But under pressure, under real pressure, you sometimes miss. So just start it more on your right leg. It could be the day that maketh the man, though. Going up the ground, getting his hands dirty. He just seems to have really started to emerge. Three contested marks so far in the game, Tim, uh, for Tom Hawkins. And that is what he did at under-18 level. He's doing it again today. Well, what a tantalising quarter this has been. It's just about at its end. In fact, it comes to its end with Geelong having jumped Hawthorne early. Had their lead pruned back. They lead by five points at the first change. It's a good start. Oh, it's a great start, isn't it? I think probably one of the most entertaining quarters we've seen this year. Just the enormity of the game, where the Hawks are, and obviously the champs. The two last premiers had it, had it together. Well, there's going to be a lot to talk about on Monday night, and Alistair Clarkson will be there on one week at a time. We talked to him. We talked to him during the week. We replay it at half time. Don't go away during the break. Quarter time at the MCG. The Cats lead the Hawks by five points. Andy Maher. Thanks very much, Tim. Down on the boundary with a great old Hawk who had some fantastic stouches against the Geelong Footy Club. That's his boy in the middle of the huddle. That's Josh Kennedy. I'm talking to John Kennedy Jr. What a great experience for the young fellow today, John. Yes, he's uh, he's he was looking forward to it today. Um, Hawthorne Geelong rivals rivalries have been uh, renowned, and uh, you know he's so far he's uh, doing okay. So. And you're here to talk about a fantastic reunion, a premiership dinner, the 88, 89 years. Obviously a Geelong flavour there. Um, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, well, on the 21st of 
of uh, August, Friday the 21st, we've got a uh, reunion 88 89s, getting all the boys back uh, Dipper, Dermy, Platts, Pritch, Mewy, the whole lot of them are coming. So we're going to have a great night. So I'd encourage all the supporters to get down, uh, get involved because we'll, uh, we'll ensure you have a good time. There'll be some fantastic stories to be told, there's no doubt about that. Good luck, thanks for coming down, and good luck for the young fella in the last three quarters. Thanks very much, Andrew. Uh, Back to you, lads. Uh, Andrew? Yes. Uh, can I go to that? <laughs> Malcolm Blight's asking whether he can go to the dinner, John. Uh, mate, uh, we might let you in. We may let you in. I don't know about that. They are Blighty. It's a very, very tentative invitation. <laughs> Three great generations of Kennedys at Hawthorne, of course. The most revered name and family at the club. And uh, we're talking about Ablets at halftime. Gary Jr. and Senior. We're talking a great game of footy here. Geelong by five points as the second term gets underway. Taylor and Mumford in ruck, and Hodge, who oh. was uh, contained in the first quarter. Wera, Sewell, back to Hodge. Taylor, Franklin now up in the midfield exchange. Awkward hand pass for Osborne. Rioli, bravely, skillfully. Franklin giving it up. Vachinsky, Rioli's got him. There's a Hawthorne player down. Osborne cop one. Oh. Flat on the ground, not moving. Taylor's got it for the Cats. Back to Lonigan. Roughhead trying to apply some pressure, but Lonigan delivers coolly and finds Burns. Osborne Jordan. slowly regaining his senses. Gee, Tim, that was uh, that ball's moved about 80 metres without actually a kick happening. It was just pressure. Amazing. Burns to Ling, to Enright, to Ablett. Started in the middle this second quarter, and he's off with a little burst, and he kicks to Chapman on the lead. How good was that kick? Terrific. They combine beautifully, yeah. don't they? We saw that last week. He's they Michael Osborne as well. Kel, he's got a bit of a whack behind the play, and I reckon it might have been Mumford who collected him. Let's have a look at this again. Oh, so just he's running to Buddy. Him, yeah, cannoned him into Buddy, and he's pretty groggy. So, Paul Chapman, career best form in his 10th season of AFL. Right on the arc, he lets rip, but it was never going to get there. Pushed it across the face for a behind. So if you knock a player into one of his teammates who inflicts the damage, can you be accountable for the initial knock? Let's think about that one, Tim. You've got me stumped there. You're on the rules committee, yeah, Gus. I'm not sure that's our well, I think it has come up once has in it? the past. Yeah, I and, think it has uh, as well. I think there might be culpability. But uh, the question of where the ball was and whether the knock could be reasonably expected to be coming of course comes into play so it's Geelong by a goal there's a lot happening at the MCG as there almost always is when these two teams meet McGlynn in the Lewis direction he outmaneuvered Ablett but couldn't hold the mark and Gary Ablett comes away a winner as he so often does Chapman to Selwood big floater to Bartell it was beautifully executed now Hawkins who is having a lot of it growing as this game wears on. Enright into half forward. Mooney just just uh, shaken off his feet as he was trying to mark it. Now Brown and Hawthorne have a real chance here. The 50's open. Just Lewis and Ablett inside. Lewis with the height advantage. Uh, not a great kick. Bad kick. Gives him no chance. And yet, after Corey's uncharacteristic fumble, there is a chance and Lewis calls it home. Still in, I reckon. Oh no. It's a goal. Scores level. I'm not sure what happened while the ball was back in play as we got a second look at it, but Lewis did get it over the line. Chelsea Roffey called it good, and the Hawks tie up the scores. Initial kick in wasn't great because Joel Corey, who we very ever rarely see make a mistake, he dropped one that he should have taken, and the pressure was great, and Emright just over the line. Oh, that's a close call. I can't remember the last time I saw Joel Corey make a simple mistake like that. He's such a consistent, Have a look at this. solid player. Yep, yeah, it looks like a good call. Chelsea in the right spot. It's also, uh, yes, indeed. It's also two of their goals kicked very similarly. I mean, great skill, but just fell their way, didn't it? A bit of lucky bounces, really. For Leon Davis' pocket. Yes. We expected it to be pretty fierce and willing. And it certainly has lived up to those expectations early on. The Hawks with the clearance again. It's a high ball underneath it. 
at the drop was Campbell, Campbell Brown. Now Ling with a clearing kick, and he's got numbers on the outer wing. Getting it over the top, Burns combines with Bartel. Bartel kick smothered Mitchell. Mitchell with 12 touches in the opening quarter, and that's a great smother. A replay of the incident, Malcolm. Behind the line, perfect call. Have a look at the hand. The ball well over the line. Beautifully done. Mumford palms it down, but not to a teammate, and pushed in the back. So that that matchup continues. Uh, Luke Hodge, who was kept at two disposals in the first term by Cameron Lee, and he's coming up for his second already in the second quarter. Sorry, guys, Sam, you run straight just, through, just going back to that camera work, Tim, we've talked about this before. Grand final day. They've talked about a third umpire for a decision like that that may or may not cost you a premiership. Well, I'll tell you what would have been very handy there, an extra goal umpire to see it from the other angle because Corey was between the goal, goal umpire, umpire and the ball. Yeah. Meanwhile, Hodges kicked it straight oh, to Selwyn and Mooney just absolutely crunched Murphy. Eyes on the ball, courageous stuff from Cam Mooney. But the, with the possession is the Hawks. Gee. Courage both sides there. Oh. McGlynn under pressure. We are getting exactly what we hoped we would get from this. Oh. This is a tremendous contest. That was equally as well done from Tom Murphy as well because he actually knew where the contact was coming. Look, Tom Murphy, and he just put his body on the line. Abuse by Andrew Mackey. Abuse from Andrew so Mackey. So at the stand is ground Free Murphy. Kick. Well done. Free kick to Hawthorne against Andrew Mackey for abuse. Oh. Ray Chamberlain. Offended by something that was said, here's Guerra for Franklin and waiting down Lewis. Wouldn't bounce for him. Corey, rough heads dangerous. Gets around Scarlett. Lewis is a left footer. So's rough head. Tough spot. Disciplined kick. McGlynn the flyer. Couldn't quite hang on. Fights on, but he'll be in trouble if he doesn't get that out. It does come out. Ablett. Oh, he is so good at getting himself out of the um, get outable situation, and he finds Ling. Ling marks in front of Hodge, and then spears the pass straight to Rioli, and Bateman from outside 50 goes for home in front. Couldn't take the mark, though, was Buddy, and he's fallen awkwardly. Might have hurt himself there. Bateman did the team thing. He looked like he was going to go for home, and he just spotted Franklin in the pocket, and he's fallen awkwardly over Harry Taylor. Back in play, only a few metres out from the Hawks' goal, but it's Ablett again, driving it out of defence. Burns better be careful, he's going to get caught. And now the ball in dispute, and they come from all angles. Back, free kick to Luke Hodge. Cameron, you're bleeding in the back. Oh, I'm not. Don't need... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Lingy, he's not he's happy at all. Back. Luke Hodge, ball listen to that. Gone, don't don't no. this umpire. Not Start messing up a good game of footy. That's two ordinary decisions, I reckon. One for abuse. I don't know what he said. But another little soft one. That's not in the back. God. Tough call. And perhaps justice. Because they've stolen possession and the big bomb comes in for Mooney. Camped at the drop. He couldn't take the mark. Running onto it is Varco. He's quick. But he's forced to apply the tackle. And now Murphy. Underground kick to Ellis, put his body on the line, and he'll win a free kick. Right there, play on. So you just get the feeling that we've stepped up a gear or two here early in the second quarter. Guerra, Mitchell, and a PB last week, kick three goals to Gillam. And back in board to Kennedy, and they're away, linking up through the midfield. Ellis is on the end of this play. It's a good piece of play to Roughhead, forced to go at it one-handed, awkward-looking kick, rode the bump well, and now he gets it back to Bateman. A high ball. It's going to drop in the goal square, and he forces Osborne to do a little bit too much. He was outnumbered. He gives away the 50. Oh, this is... Hey, we had a terrific game, didn't we? And three umpire in this season. It's pretty soft. Malcolm, you've got the elbows going. You look like you want to just leap out of that chair and get down in the middle. I, mean, yeah, I, mean, I don't like bagging up, Pies, but I mean, I reckon you've got to feel the game. Don't lose the faith, Malcolm. It's still a pretty good game. Here's no Tenace. <laughs> and here's Ablett. He wastes no time for Hawkins, who has taken a stack of marks. That was number six. He is within range. 
Could he be the man today to ruin Alistair Clarkson's party? The Cats are getting just what they've told us they want to get through this season. Real competition, a real test. Practice in situations that resemble big finals. There's the task, there's the kick, and there is the perfect result. Tom Hawkins gets his second. Oh, I, I think late in July, one Tom Hawkins, all that expectation on him, that is a beautiful kick no matter where he put it. Hit it lovely, just got in, but from there, I think he's come of age. I think, well, I think we've all seen a footballer now. The Cats have got another good one. Well, what a classic scrap unfolding at the MCG. Saturday afternoon footy and Saul takes it out of the clearance here. He kicks to half forward. Dowler underneath it. One-on-one -on -one contest. Milburn did well. Great second effort. Dowler onto Franklin. He's going for home. Oh, buddy, you beauty. <laughs> Stages threat this year. People have said he's had a struggle for form, but a big occasion. Massive game, grand final rematch at the MCG, and this man is standing tall. His last five quarters have been unbelievable. He didn't seem to strike that all that well, and yet he got a great result. Chapman Mooney being mauled by two of them. No sympathy. Birchall, Murphy, Gillam. Hawthorne's defence holding up. Xavier Ellis so good in the grand final last year. Cool head on young shoulders. Oh, Birchall mown down. That's in the back. Ablett coming from behind. Needed to get the tackle right. Speared him forward. Birchall was gone otherwise. He'd taken a long time. 33 plays 33. This is one hell of a first half. Murphy, Gillen. Remember the Cats kicked the first three goals. Hawthorne have been pretty good since. Lewis to Dowler. Now in the Franklin direction again. He's got three flying with him. Rough head weights down. Buddy and Brown. Buddy. No. Could he do no. it? Could he do no. it? Is there anything the man can't do? Uh, how good is that? Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. That's not football. <laughs> oh. That is magic. Yeah, that is amazing, isn't it? Have a look at Ruffett's recovery. That was as good as anything. Little give. And just for fun, we'll kick our third like this, the Hawks. Three goals they've kicked like that. Is this not the goal of the year? Is this not the best one I've seen this year? I'll go he. We saw a pretty good one here last night, Leon Davis. That was the goal of the year, and Brendan Favola's was the goal of the year the a couple soccer of weeks over ago. Head, that's it. Hang on, my goal of the year, Tim. There's a difference. There's some genuine contenders. I'll tell you an area of the game Hawthorne will be wrapped with. They're leading contested possessions 50 to 38, 51 to 38 now, and that's an area that they have struggled in all year. In the blink of an eye, Buddy has started to turn it on at the MCG. Shields to Mitchell. Here go the Hawks again. Through Guerra. Using it by hand. Back to Guerra. Kicks it long, looking for Roughhead. <laughs> Jared Ruffhead used his body to perfection and strong hands has marked right in front. Kick four against Geelong in round one when they lost by eight points. Really came home strong in the second half, but against one of the best defenders in the last 10 or 15 years, that is an outstanding mark. Well, if he puts this through, I reckon you'll be able to hear the rest of the competition shaking. Not quite yet. <laughs> uh, lovely. Good work, Kelly. <laughs> Excellent. It's a shank, wasn't it? Don't see him kick like that very often, do you? They've kicked six of their last eight goals. Have the Hawks. Mackey. Oh, it's a beautiful kick. It needed to be just right. He finds Milburn. Geelong shaken at the moment. Hawthorne absorbed some early pressure. And they're, they're applying a lot of their own. Good shot before of Geelong's own. You can see Wojcicki oh, saying, where do I go? I haven't got an option here. So he does what Geelong do well. He played on, took them on. But they're hesitant. They're trying to just pinpoint their way through. At the moment, Geelong just putting a little bit of doubt into the minds of the Geelong midfielders. 
And the Geelong midfield hasn't been up. Oh, what a fine mark by Murphy. There's a whistle and it's a free kick to the man in front, Gillen. And that's very un-Geelong like to kick to a two-on-one. Rook had a reasonable attempt at the contest, but Ablett forced to kick to a two-on-one situation. Campbell Brown. Franklin with Taylor. Franklin just tried to sucker him. Bateman. Franklin still there. Scarlett. Bateman taken high, not paid. Cool. Tim, just I reckon we should right now consider the psychological value of what Hawthorne are doing to the Cats. Considering what happened last year in the grand final, even early in the year, this is pretty... Another goal here might be demoralising. The Cats need to act here. They're lucky to come out of all of that with a free kick. Advantage called. Chapman's got nothing here. So he just swings in hope in the rook direction. It was a hard contest. Kennedy there. Ellis, ball, sits well. Osborne, Hawthorne applying inexorable pressure. Freakish bounce there, kept it alive. Rough head and scarlet unforgivingly at the football. And right pleading for holding the ball decision, but he played it well, Ruffy. He rolled over into his back and held it up in front of him. But that kick from Chapman, he had to hesitate. He was under pressure and kicked it to an impossible situation. Hawks by seven points. Corey, Ablett. Always looks like he's got so much more time than everyone else. They're not out of the danger zone, though. Enright, now Milburn missed the target on the handball. Some errors starting to creep in. And it is true. Luke, I always used to think that no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. But right now, it looks as though the Cats starting to feel a bit inferior. And they can't let it happen. It's Hawkins and Dowler here. And it's not coming out of their contested possessions. Hawthorne 22, the Cats 11. Freedom Milburn. I need a goal. Mackey. And then to Wojcicki. He can run and carry. Has a bounce. It's a good looking kick, although there were a few spare, spare free Cats there, but he couldn't find the target. So now Gillum. Short, inboard. Birchall, Murphy, got rid of the kick just in time. Who will win it here? McGlynn v Mooney coming in as Chapman offers some support. Chapman does well, swoops. And then the sweeping hand pass to Ablett. They team up, oh, the hand pass too hot. Too hot for Tom Hawkins. Ablett goes in, retrieve his own ball again. Oh, it's tough, it's fierce. They scrap, they wrestle. He's going to pay it. And he's gone. Which he had to pay the one. Just not getting enough ball through the midfield, are they? Ablett's playing well, but getting a lot at the back end. Yeah. Got a runner out wide, McGlynn. Marks. He's got options everywhere. Finds Bateman. Too Jump. far out to score. Stabs it to Franklin. Marks on the lead. All of a sudden, some space inside 50 for the Hawks. Franklin had a one-on-one -on -one with Taylor, but in front of him was 50 metres of space, and with not a lot of pressure on the kick, Bateman's always going to be good enough to hit that. Oh, yeah. If only had two touches in their forward line, Geelong for the whole quarter. I mean, you just can't, well, you can't win, can you? Yep, good. Thanks, Harry! So Lance Franklin lining up for his fourth. As easy as you like, the Hawks are sending a message. Competition. But maybe not quite this much of it. <laughs> The Cats trail by 13 points. Hawthorne have kicked seven of the last nine. They are well on top at the moment. Hold in, Joel Selwood! Joel Selwood! Against Jayla Wakeman! Oh, Free they need kick this. to Selwood. Yeah, they, they need this. They need just to get an easy goal here. That's part of their problem, isn't it? Once it gets into that front 50. No Steve Johnson. Here's Corey. Good steal. And good delivery, but Hodges there with that fist. Shields giving it up. Lonigan touched. Hey. They needed that one, the Cats. Four goals to one in this second quarter, and it's Hawthorne's favour. Lewis, they're working it with ease. Rioli, awkward-looking kick. And it was an awkward-looking result. Mackey just slaps it onto the boot. 
Centre half forward. They stopped and waited, oh. and Chapman. <laughs> It's like a little ant crawling into a spider's web, wasn't it? Just a fly, got him. That's it. It's an anxious looking bomber, Thompson, watching on. Yeah, you've got to go off your eyes, bleeding, mate. And the blood roll. So Paul Chapman will come from the ground, caught one high in that contest. Been one of their best players, 2009, Paul Chapman. His numbers are up here. He's never been an All-Australian, which I find staggering. He'll go very close to that this year, but another player is down. He's only had seven possessions. Here's Franklin, who has just had some magic this afternoon, bloody, hasn't he? Luke, now on your goals of the year, how close is it? It's in the top five, Malcolm, without okay. uh, a question. Right. Some very, very good contenders. Paul Chapman's had 30-plus stats in the last six games. Only seven touches today with McGlynn right on his hammer. Pretty damning statistic. Simon. As we get set to go again. Cats need a goal before half-time. Shills with the handball to no one in particular. Selwood diving on top of it and then got rid of it, looking for Bartell. Osborne, Murphy, Guerra, Ellis... And Bateman, they go again. Back in board to Shields, who started this passage of play. Now Lewis Shields has been put down advantage. behind play. Oh. oh, you can't call advantage on yeah. that. It was... Hold on, hold on. No, no, it's here. It was just undisciplined by Corey, Cal. He was, uh, he had the choice to do it, and he decided to do it. And he's penalised his team here, Joel Corey. Could you see the advantage in it, Andy? Uh, it was the Hawthorne, were, Hawthorne were away, Blighty. So it's been brought back. Shields has gone from the ground. To Mark. And it ends up with no result anyway because Selwood's away for the Cats. Goes for Tenace. Hangs on well. And he has Stokes loose. But now can they make something of it? The margin's only two goals. Just under five minutes left. If uh, Geelong pull one back, uh, they're right in the game on the board, but it's not being played like that at the moment. And again, Hawthorne have been able to put it into a 50-50. Well, there's Joel Corey off the footy, and it was high contact. It was in play. Mumford and Taylor. Bartell climbs in. Lewis, been good. Sewell, Mitchell... Cool, calculating. Who's arriving? Roughhead gets there late. Had to go the spoil. Geelong with the numbers. Mackey pushed. Play goes on. End right, Selwood. That's a clever little dab with the left. Mumford got it off very quickly. Milburn, Ablett, Stokes. Ablett again. And on the end of it, nobody much. Hodge the first hand. Mitchell. Mitchell again. All right. Thought he got Something's ridden into the ground, didn't he? Yeah. Paid it down away, though. Paid right, it right. the ball. Gee. Well, the umpire, it has to be said, was in perfect position. It'll be interesting to examine that again. And it gives Geelong a great opportunity to kick a much-needed goal. And Hawkins has become their great hope up forward. This is pretty straightforward. He should have plenty of confidence now after a couple of set shot goals. Bad miss, big miss. Yeah, well, I, I'm a great believer in technique and goal kicking and um, you become a 50-50 player or a 65-35 player. And sadly, I mean, he's played really well. He's kicked a couple of nice ones, but you're gonna miss the ones that you gotta get. And I do think it's a bit about where the positioning of the ball is. Geelong's conversion, they're ranked 14th in the competition. Oh, the kick into an absolute shocker from Guerra. Straight down the throat of Mooney. Now, here is a man who we are talking about who has had trouble converting, particularly in this range. From 30 metres out, he has really struggled. They convert only at 58%, ranked 14th. So, Mooney confronting his fears and trying to put those goal-kicking jitters to bed. He does it on this occasion, and he lets Luke Hodge know all about it. Bit of by-play after that goal. Mooney just... Uh, Hodge getting in the face of Hodge now. Joel Corey off the footy. 
I want to have a look at that in a minute. I reckon Andy McCain, the match review panel, are going to have to have a little look at Joel Corey's incident before. So the Cats are within five points. They could lead at half time yet. Mooney having kicked his second goal. Guerra goes for Dowler. Got Mackey out of it. Enright, though, was able to come in and close the gate. Dowler tackles well. Rioli just couldn't scramble away. Oh, There's the goal. That, oh, he's no. missed. <laughs> I think that's the point of the year. <laughs> he, he used got, the high bounce. He got up and kicked that in one motion, which is unbelievable. Andy Barr. Just a little bit of concern on the Matthew Scarlett groin. They've been working on it for about three or four minutes. Uh, he doesn't spend a lot of time off the ground, Scarlett, so he must be under some uh, in some doubt at the moment. Just, uh, just with Bartel as we watch this, and here is the Corey one. Certainly a fraction late, wasn't it? Didn't get him that high, though, I didn't think. There's Corey, the man of the moment, over to Enright. And now Selwood, he's brought down by the Ruckman, Taylor. And holding the ball. Yes, he's gone 360, Wojcinski gone. How good is Cyril Rioli? He just adds that spark into this side. Rioli to Guerra, long to full forward. Ruff heads underneath it. Ruffin's got it. He's been good, this bloke. Hasn't he been good? I mean, he's what he's done, he's done extremely well. With Matty Scarlett off the ground too. Just exposes Geelong defence. No Tom Harley. Well, he said during the week he's got the best job in the world, standing alongside Buddy Franklin every week. Doesn't do too bad himself, but that is a costly miss. Would have given them a two-goal advantage instead. Seven points, just over a minute to play. He's been, been spending too much time watching the way Buddy used to kick. <laughs> I'll tell you. Play on! So in the last 80 seconds of the half, it feels uh, a little like last year's grand final. Every play loaded with intent. Two highly skilled, physical, powerful football teams. And the stakes are high today, especially for the Hawks. They just have to win. Taylor to Mitchell, Franklin. Lewis back to Franklin. Oh, Osborne oh. just uh, took his eyes off and he thought he had it. But they get it back. Ellis to Franklin for a third involvement. In trouble. Well done, Stokes. No, so he didn't it in Jim, just before half time, are these three umpires charts this big game for the grand final later in the year? You think their form's been good enough? Oh, Malcolm, I'll leave that to the experts. <laughs> Taylor Sewell, not a big goal kicker for the Hawks. And that was never on the right line. Hawthorne by eight points. I think that might have been categorically Malcolm. No. <laughs> Milburn to himself. And then Long, we're counting down to half time. And Mumford threw his big body at it. Couldn't get there in time. A little bit of niggle off the ball. It's the Hawks by eight points. Back in play. Mumford assumes front position. Only straight down to Kennedy and then sell its collar. Hold their bread. Move on. So the Cats with only a handful of seconds left and uh, I don't know whether they're going to intend to score. They might give one up. Campbell Brown. Oh, he needed to go. And he does go. Oh, if he kicks this at something. And he does. Oh. for Geelong. I can't believe I've just seen that. Campbell Brown, Joel Selwood, it just doesn't make mistakes. Have a look at the replay of this. So the Selwood kick, pressure from Campbell Brown. We thought, oh, he's mucked it up and he's played on, but he's somehow had the energy, the ability to get round. He's not a great left foot kick, but just got enough purchase on. So how is the psychological advantage and the momentum going into half time for Hawthorne? They lead by 14 points and look at their body language. They are up and in this game.
Hawthorne's quarter. The Hawks lead by 14 and halfway. Been dogging some of these Geelong blokes. It's obviously got the better of Matthew Scarlett. That is a significant concern. He still hasn't come out down here, so no, we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep an eye on that. We could yeah. see him in the rooms as you were speaking, uh, doing a bit of walking and stretching and so on, but uh, obviously it doesn't look good, so there's no Steve Johnson, as there hasn't been all day. And, so uh, that forces Lonergan onto Roughhead now, and Harry Taylor's won out the goal square with Buddy Franklin with Scarlett off the ground. It was compelling football in the first half. We've still got another to go. Taylor down to Saul. Hamble to no one. Stokes running high onto tackle. it. And then Matthew the high Stokes. tackle. So Stokes. Stokes will win the free. I've just Stokes. sensed they've been keen to pay this first free kick, haven't they? Try and not get too many packs. If you, I've just got a feeling they've, they've been a bit trigger happy on a soft one. Yeah, there's a couple in the second quarter, yeah. I think, that could have been let go. Stokes just pokes it wide to Lonigan. Heard the umpire. Play on. They need to make a statement here, the Cats. They need the first oh. one as Ablett takes a mark. It's been paid. He's a beauty overhead, isn't he? He's a good, isn't he? For just tricks him with his size, but his hands are lovely. What can the little master conjure up? Just a little pokey pass, and it finds Chapman on the lead. Gee, they combine well together. What sort of numbers Gary Ablett would be able to produce if he spent a whole year as a as a small forward or a goal square forward? I reckon he'd be capable of 70 or 80 goals with that ability overhead. And so dangerous the pass to Chapman, who's been fairly quiet. Only seven possessions in the first half. Good sign, though. Matty Scarlett just walking the boundary. Chapman had just seven touches in the first half. Needs to lift. Can he inspire his teammates with the opener here? It's right across the face and then thump through for a behind. Well, that's almost a miss cue, isn't it, really? Because he's a lovely kick normally. Hardly made the distance. Yep, poor Thank result. You. They really have to convert. They have only three goal kickers for the day. Oh. Big grab Peter. from the big man. Oh, don't you yeah. like that, Luke? When, they, when the big fella goes up Cameron. like that and clunks it, Cameron. I reckon it's, a, it's good a confidence boost in any football club. He shows enough yeah. signs, Mumford, that he will be a good player. And did the right thing, Move getting it, it off please. to Andrew Come Mackey. On. 50 crowded. Sits and Hawkins. Hopes. And it was a big oh. leap. Spectacular leap. Oh, Rook brought down with a crash. Pin in there. Let him go, please. So a ball up. You, it's good to see him launch okay. himself at the footy. Body. I think yep. when he's out of form or probably struggled at stages this year, we didn't see him crash packs. Cat started well at this end. And here's Chapman. He must nail this, and I reckon he has. He's done it nicely. Cats pull one back. Three of the afternoon, and they desperately needed the first one this quarter, and it came off the boot of Paul Chapman. He needs to lift. So too does Bartell. Eight touches in the first half. Back underway in the middle. Mumford did it beautifully. Palmed it to Corey. He's caught. Dispossessed. Now the ball spills clear on all fours is Saul. And it's not oh coming gosh. out. Thanks, Sean. Matthew Scarlett with the tracksuit top on. The body language doesn't look good. Perhaps his afternoon done. Mumford to Corey. Got him a little high. Oh, he's had no chance. And off the ball, there's a little bit of niggle as well. Bit of push and shove. Ablett and Osborne and Hogan's in there as well. Only played a handful of games. Simon Hogan. Here he is with his head over the footy. Scrapping in, in and under. Trying to get it out. Shane Mumford. Easy, Shane. Shane, your free kick is too high against Lewis. It's another one of those loose little free kicks. Mumford out wide to the run of Hogan. How will it sit? He kicked a couple last week. They're impressive. Smothered. That's Simon Hogan's first possession of the game. Wasn't an effective one. Game number five for this young man. He's played half uh, the game time, so big stage. Just hasn't really been able to get into this contest. Mumford and Taylor again. Mumford to Selwood. But the Hawks steal it and they snare it through Ellis and now McGlynn. Back to Ellis, not out of the danger zone. It's a little risky. 
McGlynn with a sweeping hand pass to Bateman. Rioli, the two speedsters combine. They go again. Oh, oh. Rioli's caught. We never see that. Ball spills clear. It lands in the hands of Rioli. And then he shanks the kick. It stumbles to Hodge. Over to Osborne. They're still moving forward. They're pressing the Hawks. Franklin in the pocket. I think it might have been out of bounds on the fault. Great chase and tackle for Max Rook. It was a rare event, but uh, even then, Rioli came out on top. Katz working it out. Lonigan, oh, good tackle by Big Bad Buddy. Ellis, oh, sized that up beautifully. Had to get it onto his boot, and he saw a target. It's a real focus of opposition size. Michael Osborne just feeling uh, his ankle behind play, but you really want to tackle well inside your own 50 against... Geelong because they set up so much play from half back and that is something Hawthorne have done very well. Roughhead hasn't quite had the compass so far. He finds it here. The Hawks have the answer. Just have a look at a little bit of niggle there in the pack with Mumford. A bit of the unsociable stuff that he loves to get involved with and Hawthorne and they play at their best. They're niggling and they're annoying and they're in your face. Playing on the edge, unsociable footy. It's working for them this afternoon. Ablett, Enright, caught by Mitchell. Gets the handball off to Ablett. And he spots Mackie wide. Defensive side of the wing, brings it back in board. That's got a lot of risk in it. Didn't find the target, ran off at the drop. And now they share it around the Hawks. They're off again, Murphy. Out wide to Saul, did it beautifully in his 100th game. Back to Mitchell playing his 150th and out wide, he's got a runner in Guerra. Guerra loads up on the left and he goes long. It's Franklin territory. How massive with this one-on-one -on -one contest? Now, Jimmy Bartell normally doesn't uh, let players get around him that easily. Brad Saul did, and then the ball the to Guerra, and Franklin just got rid of Taylor without too many problems. Geelong in serious trouble here. Guerra repels any hope of a forward move there. Dowler off to McGlynn. Franklin, oh, he's burning. He is burning. He might be too far out even for Buddy Franklin. Brown is there. He's got it. Or has he? Not quite. Rough head. Cats defending for their very lives here. Picked out a free kick here. Geelong's way. Had a fair piece of this, Campbell Brown. Holding the ball against Osborne. Yeah, gee. He might have been stiff. Cats hang in for the moment. But my word, the dam Michael, Michael, go. is close to breaking. Hawthorne by 19 points. On. Lee Matthews suggested this week that uh, Geelong might be a little like Essendon in 2001. Been very good for two years, but getting the breaking point. Are we seeing it today? Chapman. Selwood. Tenace. Into trouble. Munford did well for a big bloke. Mackey, now Ablett. They need inspiration. Half volley, play on the call. Just about in the back. Ellis flicking it out to Dowler. And now Osborne loose on the wing. Although the door is closing as Tenace comes at him. Here's Franklin again. That corner in Launceston a couple of weeks ago just seems to have sparked him. Brown, again, not hanging on. Look, really, it's going into the forward line. I haven't been there a lot, Geelong, but, I mean, they're just not finishing off, are they? The normal skills are just rattled at the moment. They can't find a target. Rattled, they certainly are. Third man up. Selwood just thumps it straight back to the boundary line. 
to it all again. Just following up what you're saying there, Brady, the mark play on stat for Geelong, they're going at just over 30% at the moment. They've oh, been the best at that competition. There they are, 30%, Hawthorne 54%. That continual play on footy that was been Geelong's brand for the last two and a half years today, they are hesitant. They're going back over the mark. And Hawthorne just get inside their mind when they get set up and they zone. It just puts a bit of doubt inside the Geelong minds. And at the moment, they look very, very fragile. Third man up on that occasion was Corey oh, Selwood. Too high, wins a free. Kelly, that's happened so many times today, Bartell, the third man up. I have a rule on that. Unless you get it to a player, you've got to be careful about it because you've got one less on the ground. And they got smashed in that second quarter. Not because of it, but sometimes because of it. Selwood to Tanais. They need a spark. Who can provide it? Mackey in the middle. They're using the corridor. Back to Selwood. Can the youngster lift them? To Varco. I like the look of the build-up. Burns out wide to Ling. It was an awkward half volley. And then he swings around onto his left. He kicked plenty as a junior. Has it got the carry? I think it has. Nice build-up. All look really, really, really good. And this is where I reckon you can tell a team is just not quite there. He's one of the younger players over the top and then Ling. Off his... Oh, beautifully picked up. And Andrew Maher. Geelong's defensive problems getting catastrophic. Blighty Harry Taylor's come off, gone straight into the rooms. Also looks to be complaining uh, about a groin problem. Gee, that's very worrying for the Cats. Mackey now, you can see on screen he's just going to trail in Franklin. And I think Franklin would like to just plant himself closer to goal, use his strength and his height advantage over Mackey and try and expose him in the goal square. Have a look at the height of Mackey. A, I reckon it's a good matchup. It's going to be a future matchup. I think he's clever everywhere, Mackey. Deceptively tall. Yeah. Isn't he? Renoff pokes it forward on the double back. Brown and Roughhead. Brown the shepherd, rough head the uh, kick, but the smother now, came from Milburn. <laughs> That's why you kick it in the air. <laughs> All those ground goals we've seen, you can you eliminate that. You loved them when they went through. You've turned on them now, one didn't. <laughs> Chapman, out of wing to Burns. See again, has to go back, kick over his mark. He was hesitant to play on, wasn't he? They've got them second guessing the Cats. Now Corey. I can't just say they're only two goals behind. They're not out of it, are they? Certainly not. Inside to Rook. Ball spills clear. Kennedy to Mitchell. Racking up the possessions. Now showing makers out the back. Ellis. Oh, that's a dangerous pass. And the intercept by Selwood. Great answer from the Geelong leaders. Cameron Ling stands up, yeah. kicks a big goal. Selwood puts his head over the footy in defence and then comes in. Intercepts the kick, so they, their guns, their tough players like Selwood, just responding to this challenge. They haven't kicked two goals on the trot since the first three of the game. They yeah. haven't been able to get a roll going. Could be a costly turnover. Selwood on the approach, and he makes them pay. Played well, but they're only a you know, it's a goal and a bit. Important injuries, Andy Marr. Yeah, now Shane Mumford, believe it or not, they're scarlet. They've both being worked on Mumford and Taylor at the moment. He's just come back from the rooms. Definitely got a groin issue. Uh, Mumford complaining about a pain in the back of his left knee. Another Tom. ball up. Says something for Geelong's class. We've been writing their uh, epitaph over the last 15 or 20 minutes. Oh. And they're eight points down. Can, can we use the we in another term? <laughs> Hawkins has got to step up now if Mumford's off. Sewell can't shrug in right. Did well. But Lewis has Corey for company and Burns. Thanks, Jordan. So eight points the margin halfway through the third quarter. And in fact, Geelong have closed the gap since half time when it was 14. Corey getting it clear for Burns. Fleet of foot. Ling led to it this time. It was well done by Hodge, who's gone back there, and Ling's gone with him to try and curtail Hodge's ability to control the game from the back half, as he did in the grand final. 
Hawkins and Taylor. Selwood has it covered. Ablett there, an old-fashioned shepherd with the arm spread. Oh, Ran too far. He's about to bounce it. He did bounce it. One less step. Let it play on. Might have run 15 and a half metres. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifty. Yeah. Let's play on. It's a good counter, Ray Chamberlain. Yeah. Too good, I think. <laughs> Brown. Well flighted delivery. Mooney's there with Gillum. Tanace gives to Chapman, and the Cats come out on top of that exchange. Burns again. Dangerous. Wrong side for him. Uh -oh. Stokes, bad fumble. Gillum came hard. So did Ling. Hodge, Birchall, McGlynn, Sewell, Hardman, Gillum, McGlynn. Hawks work it around until they find clear air. Guerra with Varco bearing down. Varco's been quiet. Birchall to McGlynn. The Hawks advance. Here's Roughhead. Oh, he's a big, strong man. Bateman now. And Dowler. Free kick if it wasn't a mark. Significant turning point in the mark. You caught it a bad fumble down on the forward line for Geelong. There it is there. Really bad fumble. So, Bo Dowler, I think, paid the mark by the umpire. Important moment from 45 metres, 45 degree angle. He misses. Hawks by nine points. Happens too often, doesn't it? That goal kicking just. We talk about everything else being great in the game, and just occasionally goal kicking. The thing that excites everyone when a goal is kicked just lets the players down. You should have run it along the ground and bounced it over their heads. <laughs> Oh, play on, play on. <laughs> Milburn to Bartell, long along the line, and a big leap in the pack from Rook. Pick the first two this afternoon for the Cats. Selwood to Ling. Mooney's by They're himself. Mounting they some sort of challenge here. If they can see him. Enright oh. can't see him. Didn't have time to lift the eyes. Oh, big tackle applied by Selwood. He's really lifted his work rate in this third quarter. They were out then, Geelong Blighty, as you said, yeah. Mooney was free, but that's where they try and choke you with the cluster or the zone, the middle of the ground, and they've been able to get it back. Hodge to show and makers, and then high, Roughhead with the leap, couldn't hold on to it, spilled it at the last moment. Another throw in, and there's the wounded on the Cats bench. Just see the zone that Hawthorne employ there. So they're guarding space, you haven't got a man, it just says to Bartell, where do I kick it? Do I take a risk? Just has to pop it down the line. Tenace, in and under, on all fours, in right. And now Hawkins just trying to throw oh, his weight around. Josh has, Josh has pinned it with the tackle. Yes. Heard the umpire. He said, give it to me, as we see. Clarkson very animated in the coach's box. Nine points the margin. Hawkins did well. Bateman. Over to Schoenmakers. A little burst of speed, but the kick was smothered by Enright. Desperate stuff. Renouf. Over to Shills. The youngster gets boot to ball, and Rioli's going to mark it, but play on is the call. He's slippery. He tries to spin his way out of trouble. Lewis, did he keep it back in play? He did. Now Shills, the youngest player in the league, has a snap. Across the face. There. He actually no. thought he could get through. No one else. I would even he... he actually did get through four of them yeah. and still got his handball effectively away. He's a genius. There's another way of looking at this game now with uh, Geelong down, Steve Johnson, Kelly, Ottens, Harley, Scarlett, Taylor. What a great victory it would be if they could pull this off and how much it would reinforce them for the battles that lie ahead. Chapman to Ling. Burns having quite oh. a bit of it. Oh. That's not one he'll remember proudly. <coughs> Gives it up to Mitchell. Dow a thought of him. And Guerra, good user of the ball. Probes in the box seat was Bateman, but Bartell with more height. Did it well. Tenace there with him. And the Cats are off the hook again. Hogan, rare touch of the footy. Played in the game against St Kilda. Simon Hogan, so he's had a feel of this, but 
This is the MCG in its last year's premiers. Now Tanase. Varco. Ten points in it. The Cats have rallied in this quarter when it really looked as though it was getting away. Mooney. Oh, the kick was too strong. Mitchell. It was too easy for the Hawks. Lewis. And Hawthorne could hurt here. Osborne, been a good link man for Hawthorne, drew them to him, gives to Dowler, sits it up for Franklin, but he's well covered this time by Mackey and supported by Milburn. Enright, Ling, Cats have been hanging on by their fingernails, but they're still in this. Burns thrown down, Stokes got a good result. That's four attacks, Tim, you've called there four times hasn't hit a Geelong player going forward not under that much pressure either so they're just breaking down at usage coming into their forward line back in play Taylor to Lewis heard a voice behind him it was Mitchell Ellis Birchall and now Murphy out of the center they can go here in the corridor Sean makers Oh, and a beautiful kick. How will it sit for Lewis? Can he run onto it? They're outnumbered here, the Cats. Over to rough end. Oh, a pressure applied right at the end by Enright. And Saved Lonigan. the goal. Kelly Lonigan was good then. He just came off the line and at least made a contest. See, left rough end. Well done. Back in play. Mumford, Chapman, Bartell Ling. They share it around. Corey, oh, and he's coughed it up. Shields picked his pocket and he kicks it to the goal square. No one can take the mark. Goal, Rioli goal. at the fall of the ball. Goal for the Hawks. There's Corey. Isn't that his best day, Corey? Is it? He's given it up a few times. And this is, I mean, you just could see goal, couldn't you? I reckon, I reckon he must be invisible or he's got antenna, you know? He just knows what to do. It's amazing. Well, that was a crusher for Geelong. Yeah. I think they might have been starting to worry Hawthorne a bit because they were just Sorry, boys. hanging ball. around. The Cats are the underdogs now. They're realising the enormity of the challenge they face in the game. And you can see them lifting, but Hawthorne have steadied. And it's back out to 16. Geelong have only had 24 inside 50s, as you can see, for the match. That is an all-time low for them in this dominant Stokes, era. Stokes, Selwood, Mooney from a long way with his left. Ablett, he's done it. And he'll finish the job. Great win at the clearance by Geelong. They haven't done that often today. One, two, three, goal. It's back to just 10 points. Luke, we saw Bomber Thompson make the move of Ablett down forward last week and it worked for them. Keeping him in the goal square again now. You want him in the centre clearance to win it down there, but it's worth a gamble. It helps their forward line function. Kicked a couple last week and he's camped down there in the goal square now. Chapman's moved into the middle. That's high, surely umpire. Didn't see it. Kennedy out the back. Mitchell, hurried kick. How will it sit here? Cats with the numbers. Bartell did well, kept his balance. Osborne knocked Rook to the ground. And now Brown over the paint of 50 is going all the way. The Hawks are on fire. As the furrow deepens a little. Alistair Clarkson would have to be happy. The Hawks by 16 points. Facing a challenge a week at the moment to stay in the fight for the eight, win this, and uh, they'll be at worst within percentage of the top eight. Taylor getting a kick out, but Machinsky getting back for the Cats. Geelong have been valiant in this quarter and uh, have closed a couple of times, but each time Hawthorne have had the answers. Mackey, a little cute with the kick. Selwood has lifted in this term. That's a good kick to Corey. Oh, Ellis, a tremendous effort coming with the flight for Mitchell. And again, Hawthorne turned disadvantage into attack. Sewell for Franklin and Osborne. Clever Osborne. Can Buddy do it? Didn't get the bounce. Osborne. Brown. 
Franklin, impossible position even for him. He's been a big factor, Campbell Brown, in this match. His pressure across half forward. Mooney Great. having a rest. Just as we watch this build up there, great fist away. If if they actually lose this Geelong, that's three out of the last four they will have lost. And the other team they beat was Melbourne. So it's not great form. And outscored in the last three quarters and against the D's. Yes. Perhaps the once formidable all-conquering Cats looking a little shaky as we enter the home straight of the home and away season. But Kelly, it is a famous, as Tim would tell you, anything within three goals. Is that right, Tim? It's not a problem. We're still in the game. Osborne coming from the ground under the blood roll. Sorry, Malcolm, I was distracted. <laughs> Run that by me again. I was just talking about the three-goal rule. Ah, oh, the three-goal rule, yes. Well, Cats are in front by two points, aren't they? <laughs> so just a small break in play. Bateman comes onto the ground. It's the Hawks by 16 points. Just a tick under two minutes remaining. Tenace. Does it easy here, in right, over oh. to Hogan though, and Mitchell was coming at him hard, and Hogan's had a bit of a dirty afternoon. It's been welcome to the big time for the youngster, Simon Hogan. Yeah, and he playing his, his fifth game, and he's just found the heat and the pressure a little bit too much. See Josh Kennedy there, nine contested possessions for the match. Selwood, another possession for him. Gee, he's been terrific this quarter. Really trying to lift his side, but on that occasion, out of bounds on the fall. A rare fumble. So Murphy for the Hawks. Rough head. Remember, Hawthorne kicked that extraordinary late goal in the second quarter. It's not over until the last second has been counted down. Guerra. Good stuff. Good kick. Lewis. Doesn't go for home because he can see Bateman, who is only 25 metres out. And close to three-quarter time has the chance to give the Hawks their biggest lead of the day. Just good kicking, isn't it? Good summation. Sort of experienced players now, isn't it? Just been there, done that. Beautiful kicking. Aren't the Hawks adding a dimension to the last third of this home and away season? The charge is coming. Chance Bateman stretches the lead to 22 points. So Bateman, the most recent goal kicker. And that makes it five goals to four for the Hawks in this third term. Free kick to the Cats. Can they snare one last one? They desperately need a goal, and it's in the hands of the little master. He gets it back. He's demanding the footy, but Rioli's got him. We never see that. Rioli's caught Ablett. Spills clear. Bateman, Franklin, Mackey. Mackey fell over. Franklin, um, high says play on. And the Cats swoop it with was the numbers. One little master, and the other little master got him, Rioli. Out wide. And switch play. This is his 31st touch, Selwood. He'll get it back again. Oh, he might have messed it up on this occasion. Lewis gives away the free. Got him high. Franklin hobbling after that incident. Uh, clutching for his lower back. He doesn't look good. Move on. Play on. Does look a little proppy, Andy. 15th touch for Selwood in this quarter. As the clock counts down, the siren sounds. Three quarter time. And the Hawks out to their biggest lead of the afternoon. It's 22 points the margin. Uh, we came here this afternoon hoping for a brilliant game. We've had all of that. Last year's Premiers, the Hawks have just sent a message to the rest of the competition. And the best team of the last two years have answered admirably. 22-point margin, still in it. Rivalry round. There'll be a lot to talk about on Monday night. 7.30 on one. Alistair Clarkson on one week at a time. The noon's game has been Hawks at three-quarter time, lead by 22 points. Geelong have some injury concerns and we'll head down 
to, uh, to Andy Ma to give us an update on those. Yeah, Das, uh, significant concerns, not so much for Shane Mumford. He came off, they worked on the back of his knee and his calf muscle for about 10 minutes. He came back on and will resume at the start of this last quarter. The man in the back right there, Matthew Scarlett, is clearly going to be the major concern going forward. He's done a groin. It looks a significant one. Harry Taylor, the bottom left there, he's in all sorts of strife. They've worked on him for 15 minutes in the uh, third quarter. They gave him a little fitness test uh, at three-quarter time. He is gone. He will not... Look, look. they haven't put a tracksuit on him at this stage, but you'd say that he's absolutely gone. Buddy Franklin was the other one. He's OK. That lower back's not a problem. Sportsbet.com.au. That's the incident that we saw Buddy involved in. They've got Hawthorne over the line here. $1.25, the Hawks. Geelong, $4. You feel like a smashing could be on the cards here, and you wonder what the implications of that might be. Oh, a smashing. It's 22 points as the last quarter gets underway. The Cats have got to dig deep now Held in. just to make this last term a, a contest, let alone win the game. Hey. Taylor and Mumford at it in the ruck. Murphy and Lewis for the Hawks. And Lewis goes crashing through. Mackey leads Franklin to it. Contest never over with Franklin. So agile when it hits the ground. And he can lay a tackle. He's actually done OK, Mackey. I thought at some stage he might make a call. Oh, hello. Yes, there was a bit of a buzz from the crowd as that occurred. Selwood went down. Lewis has at times been in trouble for that sort of inside activity. Mitchell for the Hawks. Goes in the brown, rough head direction. Machinsky buried in a tackle. It's just one they need to lift, isn't it, Wojcicki? Just to get that game and break it open. Having a look again at Jordan Lewis. He just can't help himself, Jordan Lewis. Loves the unsociable footy. Here's Ablett to Varco. Back to Ablett. Working their way out of trouble. Hamble straight to Birchall, though. And Lewis over the top. Saul, rather. They've got loose players everywhere. Thank you, Andrew. Guerra. Assessing his options. He's best to nearly get there when he absolutely unloads. If he hits it, good. He can kick at 55. He's going to have a shot. He's going to back himself in. Brent Guerra from outside 50. Well, he's given it everything. He is he far has too put much. That eight rows back. It's gone, what, 62 metres? 63 metres. And he's missed by 25 as yeah. well. A lovely long kick, though. It was, Malcolm. <laughs> it was. See, the, uh, the cluster looks imposing right now, and that kick lobs in the heart of it. Ellis. She's a good player. Lightly built. Terrific head on his shoulders. Showed he can uh, stand the big stuff on grand final day. Guerra has another go. That is the way it's done. That is a goal, and it might be the sealer. Just carded, found a home at the Hawks, and perseverance is uh, his reward. Premiership player now, and a lovely kick for goal. Ten goals to three from turnovers this afternoon. Rook and Tanais watching on. Had hold of him before he had the football. Paul Chapman arm around the way. Just 14 disposals Chappie. for Paul Chappie. Chapman this afternoon. He's going to get a free kick, kick one goal, but quiet afternoon. Chapman. Goes long and looking for Hogan, floating back. It was a well-weighted kick. Hogan takes the mark. This is a big moment for the youngster. Hasn't seen much of the leather this afternoon. He's kicked a couple in his five games. From Warrnambool, grew up barracking for Collingwood. Perhaps the biggest moment in his short career. He gives it everything and that is truly something. Simon Hogan, the unlikely goal kicker. Simon Hogan's the young man who gave up his medical studies for his football. He might have found the tonic to spark a Geelong revival. <laughs> They're still close enough, but uh, it'll take some doing. Here's Ablett. McGlynn stopped him in his tracks. Birchall, good pressure though. Corey, Varco, they need a lift from him. Ling. 
Kicked a good goal in the third quarter. Looking to find a bit of that old goal-kicking magic in the last. Yeah, he's had the job all afternoon on that man there, Luke Hodge. Hodge, just eight disposals. Good win to Taylor. Lewis, influential player. Birchall, Mitchell. And that was a good kick. Just gave the man behind no chance. Bateman could really attack the ball. Got himself into bother, but they're good enough to get out. Osborn giving it back to Bateman. And Campbell Brown has been a thorn in the Geelong side up there. A goal just before half time. Another one in the third quarter. Having a crack from outside 50. Got under it a bit. Won't carry home. There's an early whistle. Geelong free kick. Boy, Campbell Brown made his name over the past few years as a, almost a key back. Matthews has given one to Osborne there. Umpire's going to let it go, which is the right decision. Is his best role forward? Is that where you'd leave him for the rest of the year? I, ju I just think if nearly, if you look at it, most premiership teams have a swing man, you know, yep. that bloke capable of going both ends of the ground. And we'll just watch this unfold and we'll probably get back to that. So sends it inside 50. It's a bouncing ball. The two Ruckman go at it. Hawkins gets there ahead of Taylor. Hambles back to Mooney. Awkward position, just forced to hoik it up high. It's all Hawthorne. Lewis at the drop. Lewis happy just to hold it up. You can see his options. There's not too many at all. Over to Guerra. Now Ellis, back to Guerra. Trying to work their way out of the defence. Oh, this could be a little bit of trouble here for the Cats, for the Hawks rather. Selwood on the bottom of the pack. Renoff went in hard. The umpire says, give it to me. We'll have a bounce. They were mucking around. They were over-possessing it then. Back in play. Again, bodies come in from everywhere. Taylor and Mumford. No one can break clear except Varco. Swoops. Goals. A Hawthorne in the eight as it stands. They need the points from this game, of course, to keep themselves there. And the chances are that uh, Essendon and or Port Adelaide would hop over them and keep them out on percentage uh, for the time being. But the Hawks are coming. But so are the Cats. It's back to 16 points. And they haven't said farewell to this one yet. Hogan, Corey from 48. He kicks the goal. The Cats are alive. There's a big set of clearance. Mumford weighted down, but they just forced it forward. They had their guns in there. They had Corey, they had Selwood, they had Bartell. Just able to just shovel it forward. And Corey ran on, as we've seen him do so much over the last two or three years. He's such a gut-running hard running player and he finished with a big goal back to 10 points it was 28 points three or four minutes ago the cats have kicked three on the trot three goal rule jim <laughs> i will never argue with you again malcolm well that's a pressure cooker has been all afternoon back to 10 points Renoff, corey look like a throw from here Got away with it. Stokes slaps it on the boot. Ling, Hodge, Hodge, Ling, Hodge, McGlynn. Still trying to clear. In there, McGlynn. Now Chapman. Can they go again? The Cats are pressing. They're mounting a challenge. Corey. Milburn, short. Found a target. Hogan sweeps it out wide. Corey kicked the last. He goes long. It's one on one. Stokes. Oh, tried the slips catch. Couldn't get there in time. Absolutely centimetres in it, wasn't it? Just to, sometimes it's what you need. She's building, though, the game. Just oh, getting back to that point of uh, players playing forward and back. Campbell Brown. Campbell Brown, yeah. I, I just look. Graham uh, Corns. 
for Port did it, Hunter did it in the Premiership team, yep. uh, Goods did it for Sydney, you know, backwards and forwards. I think there's always one. Shane Allen. <laughs> yeah. Hawks are the team under pressure right now. They have to win. Their finals chances are on the line right here, right now. They can do with a goal. Dowler, Franklin's one out, has five for the day, and he might be lining up for his sixth. That was a smart kick from Bo Dowler. He summed it up really well. Mackie has tried to play Franklin from in front, which is the way he should, but he just gave it enough air, and you could just see the body position. But he had the strength, he had the sit. Took it well. It's been a good contest, those two, but that was... That was pretty well done, wasn't it? Hasn't kicked more than five in a game this season. <laughs> Still hasn't. And the Hawks' lead is just ten points. And it's not enough. I think someone talked about the sealer a little while ago. <laughs> My word, that was premature. And right to Milburn. Milburn. Oh, buddy's bearing down. Cool head. Didn't clear it, though. Pouncing on it, slapping it forward was Brown. They're teaming up here, the Hawks. Dowler brings it around the corner of his body. Rioli, the excitement machine. Ooh, Rioli. Oh, no, he missed. Wow. Mackey. Oh, no. Quickly, too quickly. Ellis sees a little target. It's not 15. So it wasn't a good option. Varko's found something. Ablett. Ball up. Well, this game is absolutely at fever pitch. And it's actually a reversal of round one where Hawthorne came at Geelong in the last quarter. Bartell doing the rucking. Varko wasn't expecting it. Thrown out by Mumford. They get a result. Chapman clearing. Rough head trying to find the handle. Cam Mooney, is he going to get pinged here? He's not. <coughs> Umpire's going to ball it up. But Cam Mooney's just had four disposals in this match. Four kicks, two goals. Very quiet. I think Mark Thompson would have to be pretty happy with this. Cats away again. Ablett sitting it. Hawkins. Well played, Murphy. Just edged him forward. Hogan, throw in. More than half a quarter left. This is, the noise has just uh, <laughs> amazed me. It's just, the crescendo's just lifted, hasn't it? As the goals came for the Cats, so is the voice. So the game in the balance. Inside 50 for Geelong. Hogan blazes away. Brown, back to save the day. Has time to regather. And he's away. He's got time. He's got a paddock. He's got space, a couple of bounces. Dowler, back to Brown. The two flatmates combine. I wonder who does the housework in that house. Up to Franklin. Here's Buddy. A little bit of magic, not this time. Shields, Hawks still with possession. Bateman, ran off. Handball's back to Franklin. He's too far out to score and he just pokes it out to his partner in crime and Ruffin spilt the mark. In his 100th game, back to Renoff, broke the tackle, caught the second time around. Well played, Hawkins, and the Cats' advantage are away. Gee, the Hawks let a chance slip there. <coughs> Varko to Ling, to Mooney. Cats lifting in numbers. Here's Ablett, prizing it out. Brilliant work, Ablett. Mooney, oh, no. oh missed the mark with that. Hodge, Mooney atones for his error. Oh, it's... Oh. Absolutely unforgiving football at the moment. How good is the pressure in this game? The Cats just trying to run through that wall of players that guard the corridor. Simple chest mark drop from Ruffhead, but intensity's going up. The crowd noise is going up. <laughs> Still more than half a quarter to go. Cats have two on one. Enright. Selwood. Oh. oh. Throw in. There's one player in the competition whose tackles just stick every time. Good decision, though, wasn't it? Yeah. He got rid of it legally. 
Oh, to Joel Corey. Advantage is up here. Geelong free Cam kick. Your free. Cam Corey takes it though. behind Cam the throw-in. So the ball has actually ground. advanced to the Ruckman, who was Mooney. Things just falling the cat's wow. way. Milburn. Great kick. And Burns. Joel Corey's run on hard here to set a wing. So the ball in the hands of Shannon Burns. He's indecisive. He looks to take his man on. Into Mines. Back to Milburn. Good kick. Clearing kick. He's got a runner and he releases Selwood. Selwood goes short. Couldn't hit the target. Ling under enormous pressure. He might have trapped it in and under. Uh, yeah, well played says, from give Lee. It, to me. it got to his feet then, which is really yeah. smart stuff. The kick from Sir just off uh, offline a little bit. It's probably been the worst part of their game today. Just that sometimes that kick into the half forward area. Just Edge of your seat it. stuff here at the MCG. 64,000. Counting down. The Hawks. Brown away. He has a bounce. He sends it inside 50. It's Franklin and Mackey. Franklin and Mackey. Mackey. Franklin. Franklin goes again. Can he pick it up and snap it? Oh, He's missed. Focus. He's played it smart, Franklin, in the last five minutes. He's just standing and delivering on Mackey, saying, just kick it on my head. I've got the strength to outbody him. Mackey is not a bad match for him, although slightly undersized. And here go the Cats. Corey, and there's a man loose. It's Hawkins. And running in is Stokes, and the Cats are within a goal. For their football life in season 2009, and they're under siege. The Cats are coming. Ablett on the bench, having a breather. Four goals to one they've kicked in this final term. And there's a goal in it. A crucial clearance. Mooney inside 50. Bouncing ball. Who can win it? Ball in dispute. It's a big ball to be won here. Burns dives in. Sold to a couple of hawks. And he's been pinned. I hate the rule, but it was the rule. And all he had to do was turn and just protect the ball. He probably would have got a free kick. Didn't need to do that. Well, she comes back in. Stokes. Stay cool. Need to stay cool there. Bad kick from Murphy. Now Selwood with a man loose in Varco. And he can go back, line them up, and level the scores. Blighty, really obvious down at ground level, but the Hawthorne midfield's just stopped running. And Selwood and Corey, in particular, this quarter have just lifted enormously. How good Selwood be, Andy? From 28 points down early in the quarter. Varco doesn't make the distance. That what is... a disappointing result, but Taylor is looking slightly nervous. Mitchell in his 150th. That's not 15. Shields, a young player. Mitchell getting into help. Oh, the heat is on the Hawthorne defence now. There we can. Varco again. Mumford getting it to him. How will this bounce? Murphy getting back. Do you take it through or not? Darcy, you're the expert. Bartell out on the full. I'm, I'm still amazed at that Varco kick. 28 metres it went. Unbelievable that he just poked at it and didn't yeah, make the distance. Yeah. Just really clammed up. Hawthorne defence looked vulnerable all of a sudden. In the last half, from 13 in, inside 50s, Geelong have scored eight goals. So they get it inside, they look like they're going to score. Will they crack under the pressure? The Hawks, they've led for most of the afternoon. Saul, Osborne gets a clear possession away. And now Shields, the youngster, only 18, kicks up to Franklin. Did well, he beat two, stood his ground. Will Buddy be the game breaker? He's kicked five already this afternoon. Sends it in board to Saul. It's tense at the MCG. Over to Mitchell. Mitchell looking for Hodge. Couldn't find him. Couldn't hit him. Running onto it and slipping over was Bateman. Now Kennedy outside of the boot. If you don't mind, nearly. It would have been a freakish goal from Kennedy. They've had a few chances, haven't they? Buddy's had a couple now, Kennedy. I just haven't found this, the big ones at the moment. Chance. 
A little bit of breathing space, a seven point Play lead, on. but uh, it's not enough with Play more than six me. minutes to go. go, go, go. Milburn to Lonigan. Ling. Hogan, who's been better in the second half. Oops. Lonigan again, but that puts Burns under the heat. Just closed down their space, didn't they? Forced the handball up, really occurred uh, the turnover at centre wing. So just a bit of hesitation and trying to run it through the zone. Not able to get it through on that occasion. What a glorious victory it would be for Geelong if they could win this. Down on men, down on the scoreboard, but back in the game. Here are the Hawks, though. Mitchell. Hoping for a bounce. Oh, Roughhead just not getting it right in this last quarter. Chapman drew them to him and then gave it off. And the Cats are away. Ling. Awkward for Hawkins. Back to Mitchell. Ran off. Hawthorne needing a goal. Oh, that was lucky. Play on had been called, so Mooney was within his rights. All up. Oh, just everything uh, magnifies itself in the last five minutes of a big game, doesn't it? Every mistake, every goal, every kick, every handball. Just so much on it now. So much on it for the Hawks. MCG is buzzing. It's an electric atmosphere. No one can clear it. They Bombers. pounce in, they come in hard. An interesting move. Shane Mumford's gone to the goal square and Cam Mooney has been pushed into the ruck. There's Mumford one-on-one -on -one in the goal square. Mooney just nine disposals. Attacking side of the centre for Hawthorne. Renoff just thumped it inside 50. A ball again in dispute. Ablett swoops. Classy. Tenace. And now Wojcicki. We know he's got speed. He doesn't run. He gives it back to Lee. Advantage is played. Isn't that 50 downfield if you match. hang on to the bloke who disposed oh, the footy? Oh. Five minutes to go. The kick from Corey was ordinary. The Hawks win possession. Mitchell has a loose man. Kennedy, he's been good. He's stood up in the heat of battle to Saul. Out wide. Now Shills. Which way will he go? He goes long. He's looking for a target. And over the top was Renoff. Couldn't hold it. He had the sit. Had the run at it, the big man, but he couldn't hold on to it. Cats have got to score twice. If Hawthorne could kick a goal, that would really up the ante. Jolong, though, cool all Selwood. Rioli was coming at him. Mackie to Enright. Ling. Oh, no. Selwood. Is that high? This is uh, disposal was. number 23 in the second half for Joel Selwood. He is a star, this man. He's got an unbelievable knack of getting around the shoulder, hasn't yeah. he? It's just one of those freaks that just ducks at the right time. Uh, and hard. Beautiful choice there as he gets to Stokes. Burns. Now Bartell. Well, look at Stokes running. Look at him run. Get out of the way, Tommy Hawkins, he's saying. Bartell goes long. Rook is his hope. Rook! He's kicked a goal. The whistle blew to pay the mark. It is a goal. The margin is one point. Oh, beautifully called, Tim. That kick weighted from Bartell was elite. It just could not have been weighted better. He had great poise. He had a player in short. He said, no, I'll wait. And look at this kick. Could not have weighted that any better. <coughs> well, there were some that thought it might have been over earlier, but I, I for one... I thought there was something special going to happen today, Tim. Well called, Malcolm. Cam Moody in for this centre bounce. This is uh, such a crucial Brent centre Brent Yeah, he's come off Darcy's capitulated with car cramps in the calves and in the inside of the groin there. He's in all sorts of trouble. Moody and Renoff. They fly. Oh. Renoff. Down is Hodge. Also, McGlynn's in there. Oh, oh, and yeah. Osborne over the top. Mooney mentioned pre-match about payback. What about uh, a draw? Does that put the hooks OK? I'd much prefer a win. Yeah, OK. Hard in your mouth stuff at the MCG. Less than five minutes remaining, and again, it can't squeeze out. They're desperate in and under. 
The clubs, incidentally, have drawn once in their history, and that was a grand final year, 63, when the Cats beat the Hawks for the flag. Already seen a draw this season. It was only a few weeks ago at this very ground. Stokes trying to get out of trouble, coming through and meeting it heavily was Murphy, but he's not getting out of there. Selwood's ensuring that. So too is Corey. It's pinned to him. Stop, start, tense footy. This is what I don't like. Just as we watch Alistair <laughs> Clarkson. You'll lose your hair shortly, Alistair, I can tell you. Hawthorne by a point. Hodge just bangs it, goes for territory. Tenace leads the race. It didn't bounce for him. Bateman, Franklin with genius. Wonderful athleticism. Speaking of which, Rioli just couldn't break. Rough head laying the tackle, but Bartell off to Enright, to Lonigan, to Ling. Cats <coughs> needing to build one last time. Ling put himself under pressure. Hawks have two on one here. They need a clean victory. Oh. They don't get it. They get a throw in. Even Xavier Ellis, who's been cool and calm all day, was perhaps flustered in the moment. It has to be Hawthorne's season on the line here. Need to win this game. It is all on the line for the Hawks. The Cats score a victory either way. They'll come out of this with tremendous honour and great confidence and self-esteem. Isn't uh, Mooney's been all right in ruck, Yeah, I reckon he's... He's got, really? found a bit of the footy too. Yep. We've had a bit over four minutes. Oh, he's got to get a free kick yeah. too, yeah. Five-minute oh, warning. It's been all right. Dumb Don't free kick from Simon back, Taylor. Simon. Don't... Give away soft ruck free kicks at this stage of a game. He shouldn't do it at any stage, but he just shoved him in the back. Well, here's a scoring chance for the Cats to bomb it to well God, within range. All. He's barreled it to within 20. Plenty of Hawks up. Who's down? Big Mumford and Big Hawkins. And Hawthorne have to tie it up. Have to tie it up. Varco trying to winkle it away. Oh, it's come out. Rook. Ah, uh, well played. Ablett. Magic. Bartell. Scores a level. How is the strength there of Max Rook? Tom Hawkins just reefed it out of his opponent's hands as well. And then Ablett's strength to get through. Bartell, he would have backed him to kick that. Someone say something about a cup of tea and a good lie down. The Hawks bring it back into play. Ten stuff at the MCG. Whoops. Scores a level. Bateman brings it into the corridor. Mark can't be taken. Mitchell onto it. And then he just gets boot to ball. Down there is Roughhead. Can Roughhead run onto it? Kennedy gets there first. Kennedy handles to Buddy. Mackey's going to bring him down. Oh, the Cats. The Cats are away. Kennedy should have had a shot. A score would put them in front. And they've blown it. Milburn for Geelong. Selwood. In the 40s, disposal-wise, hard-headed Chapman bangs the Cats forward. A Bartell. score either way. Bartell from the oh, line. Jimmy Bartell, and he has men loose everywhere. Smack. I took this. I took the draw earlier, Jim. How was that defensive tackle before from Mackey? Game-saving tackle. Can't be much time left. Hawthorne, though, need the score more than Geelong. They need the Premiership points. The well, they've, got to take a risk, Tim. they've got to take a risk. They've got to flick it out of the back of the rough contest. Go in the corridor. Risk losing the game now. Hawthorne to win it. Draws no good to them. They need to win. It's almost seven minutes since the five-minute warning. Selwood favoured by the throw-in. Corey missed Ablett. Taylor. Tim. I'll put it a draw is suddenly the favourite. Now's the time to go third man up. Jimmy Bartell's done it a lot today. Ellis and Taylor there for Hawthorne. Bartell and Mooney for Geelong. And neither team prepared to give a millimetre. Bomber Thompson must be filled with pride tonight. Rook. Sewell for Hawthorne. Can't get it out. Cats hold up. Ablett. They might win it yet. They'll have a chance here. It missed a lot. There'll be a throw in. Oh. Can he go third man up over at the ruck here and just smash it towards goal? Just try and force it over for a score. 
Just on the move and run through. Just get ready. Seconds ticking down. Can the cat snare it? Lewis overran it. Corey out the back, trying to work his way through trouble. Boot to ball. Who will clear it? Martin's <laughs> taking the mark. Sorry. do Malcolm Blighter's miss. That's right. Don't Stephen kick it out on the fall. Stephen Kerr. No one would ever, ever do that in the after a siren. <laughs> Rivalry Jordan, round at the MCG. It is Everyone in the arena <laughs> standing up. Jimmy Bartell, the Brownlow medalist. Blighty, stop lining me up in the commentary box. <laughs> he approaches. He comes in. a victory that the Geelong Football Club will remember for decades. It slipped away for the Hawks. Their finals chances could be gone. Andy Marr.